Hey, Hal here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our partnership with OnX Hunt. Um, I've been using it for a while now, and if anybody knows me, they know I'm not a very techie person, but the OnX app is really, it's a real time saver. I remember the days when we poured over topo maps everywhere we was going to go and stuff, and I don't, uh, I don't do that quite as much anymore. Where it's really helped me is, is uh, scouting, you know, whether it's deer scouting, a moose, or even turkey hunting in the spring, which I do. It, uh, it really helps out. I don't have to spend as much time running around the truck, burning up the gas. I, uh, I'm just basically using my Onyx. Got it on my phone. Don't even carry a GPS anymore. So uh, I just download the areas where I'm going to be hunting, whether it's up north moose hunting. And, and uh, I use it mostly on the uh, satellite imagery. I like to see the, the cuts and the clearings and the turkey hunting, the hidden fields and stuff. But uh, everybody's using it now from the game wardens to the to uh, land surveyors and, and uh, just a great tool. And uh, with our partnership with, with uh, Onyx, if you use a code BWB, you're going to receive 20% off on your first premium or elite memberships. And you just go to onxmaps.com slash hunt. You'll be glad you did. Good luck on the trail. This is the Big Woods Bucks Podcast. Come explore the big woods and timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods Whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods Bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the Big Woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big, Big Woods, Woods Bucks Podcast. podcast. My host, host Hal Blood. Blood. Sitting, Sitting here today, today with my co-host, Joe, Joe Cruzy. Hello. And uh, we've got a couple of special guests today. we got Jeffy Paradise, a.k.a. Hondo. <laughs> you betcha. Coming up from New Hampshire. He drove all the way up to beyond today. and We'll do some chatting with him about his fall hunts. But first, we got uh, Matt Breton on. That's one yeah, of our teams yeah, from, from uh, Vermont. Vermont. Yeah. And uh, they got some stuff going over there with the Fish and Wildlife Department and how they structure it. And it's the sportsmen feel it's kind of a serious problem. And so I'm going to have you, he's going to have a little bit of time to tell. And I, even for you people not from Vermont, uh, don't think it can't happen in your state, right, Matt? Uh, that's exactly right. This is, this is an issue where uh, the anti-hunters have really gotten into the legislature because they got plenty of time and money to uh, influence things. And they're trying to disband the Fish and Wildlife Board and reconstitute it with a bunch of uh, members who don't hunt and fish and really aren't aware of, of how the outdoor legislation stuff, outdoor regulation stuff goes. Um, and this has happened in other states like Washington and New Jersey. So uh, if it hasn't happened in your state yet, it's, it's probably headed your way. Yeah, so, so what's the gist of this and what kind of help do you need there in Vermont? Yeah, for, for people from Vermont who, uh, who listen to the Big Bucks podcast, this is S258, and it's, um, it's coming out of committee, the Senate Natural Resources Committee, and going to the full Senate. And we need folks to write their legislators to, or their senators to, to ask them to vote no on this. Um, the Senate has a veto-proof majority if, if the whole thing goes through. So even if the governor, Governor Scott, vetoes it, um, it might, it has the potential to get passed. So the, the more effort we can put into just defeating it out of the gate, the better. Um, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is going to have an action alert on the, the website. Um, I can, I'll get a link here for you in a second, but um, people can just click on that link and it will automatically send a letter to your senator. Sounds good. Yeah. 
So yeah. just just reading about it a little bit, Matt, what I got from it is uh, they're essentially trying to eliminate coyote trapping and hunting for the most part. Yeah, and that's – there's a whole bunch of different in, inputs into this where they're trying to add different user groups to the Fish and Wildlife Board. Uh, but then at the end of it, they're, they definitely eliminate coyote hunting, and they've – they've worked to change some, some trapping laws pretty significantly. And we just went through a, a best practices update that hasn't even had time to really uh, be evaluated as to whether or not it's effective for trapping in Vermont. So uh, people are just pushing things too quickly and we really need to, to hit the brakes on things. Fish and wildlife management evolves over time. It has since the thirties when we started managing wildlife. And um, I think hunters need to, to be part of that evolution and and manage ourselves well but um to push this legislation through now is 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 really rushing things and it's it's ultimately going to hurt hunting and fishing and trapping in the state yeah that sounds <clears throat> monkey and with that board sounds a little more dangerous than just a bill in to address one thing like like we had the bear hunting initiative here this seems like if they get that passed and change that whole board, the sportsmen won't even have a voice, right? Really? Yeah, that's that's what the concern is. Uh, they the bill has evolved uh, since I reached out about getting on the podcast. It's at one point they were saying it needed to be made up of fifty percent non-consumptive users. Um, I don't know about you, but I think everyone's a consumer of in the world. Uh, there's no one that's not a consumptive user. So that was that language has been changed. Um, but really, the legislature created the board in the 1960s because the legislature was not doing a good job of managing wildlife. And the Fish and Wildlife Board has done a tremendous job, along with the, the folks that work in the department, to do things. Uh, everyone likes to bitch and moan about Fish and Wildlife Departments because it's easy. But I think ultimately they do a good job. Uh, and, and it's worked since the 1960s. So there's really no good reason to change this. Um, other than people being dissatisfied. And most of the people are anti-hunters who just want to end hunting and trapping and fishing for us. Well, that's the problem with these people. They, If they want to call them non-consumptive users, the problem is you can't manage fish and wildlife without hunting. So you you got to be a consumptive user to manage it, so they shouldn't have any input into it. Right, and they're, they're consumers because they're drinking water and they're using up habitat and doing all sorts of other stuff. So um, nobody's non-consumptive in my, my mind. Yeah, and, right. and you know, this, this is so – their argument, um, it gets so tired and old about they want to let nature, you know, let nature go and let it balance out. They never put, you know um, – value on the fact that we are part of that chain now okay man is part of it we're part of the management we're part of keeping levels you know wildlife levels in balance we can't go back and change that i mean we have population and we have you know uh growth of cities and suburbs and everything else so we're an integral part of it and they want to just eliminate humans out of that food chain yeah. um which is obviously a huge mistake and it's something that's happening all over now it's happening all over the country I right. mean, we see oh, yeah. that with the uh, wolves now, you know, trying yeah. to manage that and how that took over in, over in um, Yellowstone and Montana. and It, it takes so long for, the, for animals to rebound, you know, when they go through those <clears throat> cycles like that, you yeah. know, through the wolves. It's just, <clears throat> besides the fact the dollars that are put into the system, I mean, let's, you know, you boil it down. That's what keeps everything going is, is hunter's dollars and um just a really dangerous precedent and like hal said to start it off if you think it's not coming to your town you're wrong because this is this is where there's always the discussion about getting involved in talking politics but this is where we have to be involved as hunters oh enforcement yeah. i mean people and hunters in vermont get your voices heard get out now and and yeah. show these guys because in the end that's all the legislators care about is their votes yeah. so if they see that that's threatened um, right. And, and I think in Vermont, we haven't, we have some people that are active, but most hunters like to sit in the woods and, and don't want to join in on legislative topics. And I, I'm right there with it. But I think these anti hunters have been in the legislators ears 
for so long that, and that's what they hear. And so they think they're like, the senators are, I think, trying to do a good job. And if the, all they hear is that people want to end trapping and they don't hear the other side, of course, they're going to move that direction. And mm -hmm. so hunters need to, you know, respectfully write their representatives <clears throat> and senators and, and make sure this stuff gets taken care of. Yeah, because in reality, these people, uh, the antis are really the minority. You know what I mean? You got yeah. hunters and then you got anti hunters. But in the middle, there's a lot of people that that don't care one way or the other. I mean, they're not anti hunting. Maybe they're not for it, but they're not going to rock the boat. It's always the, it's the vocal minority that's that's doing it. Really, they are a minority, so it's easy enough for hunters to overwhelm that if they'll just get out there. Yeah, I I, I think uh, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they went through something similar in New Hampshire last year. Uh, with the coyotes, and they end up squashing it. Our fishing game department. Uh, I think I heard something, something thereof, but it was a collective thing from the hunters getting together and, you know, banding together. It, you know, getting back to the the hunting thing with the banding together, it, it's so difficult for hunters because most of us are hard working, blue collar workers, and we we we're always working. You know, and to collectively get together, it's, I think Joe and I, we talked about this, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not easy to, to go down to the state house yeah. at, you know, <clears throat> one o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. And, yeah. And, uh, and, and quite honestly, a lot of times people just feel like it doesn't matter anyway. Like, what, what does it matter? It's just going to go. But it does matter. It I does. Mean, I, I've been a part of a couple of them um, here in Maine just to go down and, and be heard and, and, uh, I've seen it work. So, you know, you guys in Vermont, we can, no one else from around can do anything about it. It's it's uh, the hunters in Vermont that have to. Yeah, band together. The sportsmen need to. And, and not just hunters. I mean, fishermen too. Anyone that enjoys the outdoors and loves that access because right. the move that's coming is. Think, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, get, get your, uh, get, Vermonters need to get their, their wives, their girlfriends, their sisters, their moms, their daughters to write in. Uh, if those people don't hunt, um, anyone that doesn't hunt but that is adjacent to hunting, anyone that likes venison probably should write in to their senator and um, and vote. Have them vote no against S two fifty eight. So yeah, um, let me ask you something, yeah. Matt. Do you? <clears throat> I know you're talking about writing in, but over here when when we have these issues, there's a legislative hearing, and you. Your, your show of power is putting people in the seats in the room where where the, the legislatures can see how many's for and how many's opposed. And, and that's a bigger impact because usually there'll be far more, over here is the case, there'll be far more hunters sitting in the seats than there will be anti-hunters. Yeah, and that that happened with the, the committee hearings. Um, they're definitely a... The, the language when this bill first came out was awful. Uh, and Hunter showed up in droves and did a good job testifying. And so the language is better than it was, but it's still not great. And they didn't get rid of the coyote stuff and the trapping stuff still in there. So Hunter's made a big push to improve the language. But at, at this point, it's still uh, a, a pretty bad bill for, for hunters and fishermen. Yep. So, so did the committee vote ought to pass? They... They've tabled it. They've got next week off. We have town meeting in Vermont here at the beginning of March. And so it's tabled, but it's very likely going to come out of the committee and and head to the full Senate in the next week. All right, so. then. You Vermonters, <laughs> do your civic duty there and write to your senators and legislators yeah. about it. And uh, we'll get that link up, Matt. And then uh, is there a way... Do you want people to contact you for more info or what's the? A... Uh, they certainly can. If, if people have questions, they can write me at Vermont at backcountryhunters.org. That's the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers email address for Vermont. So um, if people have questions or, or can't find the, the link on the BHA website to, to write their senator, um, I'll, I'll forward it to them. Good enough. Awesome. 
Thanks, well, guys. Right. Jeff, tell some stories. Let's get away from the boring politics. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I know we, we appreciate you taking your yeah, time, man. Matt. I had read about this, and, right. and I was really happy when you contacted Hal and, and wanted yeah. to come and uh, talk about it a little bit. And we're going to actually get this one out right away so that, yeah. um, you know, maybe awesome. maybe it'll help All a little right. bit. i got to go back to work. All, All right, right, Matt. <laughs> Great job, Matt. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you soon. See yep. you, Matt. We'll see you. Right. It, it's so important to... Uh, not only just for hunting, but fishing and anything with the outdoor sports, everybody's got to band together. Yeah. It's an attack on all fronts. I mean, you could be opposed to one thing, like uh, rabbit hunting, but you can't be opposed to bear hunting. You have to, they all coincide with each other. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's what we had to convince people here in Maine in the bear thing, because they try to first thing, well, they want to get rid of bear hunt with hounds or whatever. Well, then... A lot of people, there's, there's only a handful of people that yeah. do it. Yeah. But the next thing is, is it's going to be rabbit hunting. Yeah, hunts, what's right? next? Yeah. Yeah. They're never going to stop. So, no. no. You've got to draw the line and that's it. You know what would be nice is uh, if we could, you know, I'm not a big union guy, but somehow unionize all this together, you know, would be. Well, just they a, do that with all, every state has an organization. Yeah. I mean, we do here in Maine, we've got. <clears throat> Sportsman's Alliance of Maine, and then yeah. you've got uh, for the gun things, you've got gun owners of Maine, and then there's a professional guides association, which yeah, it's it's an organization for guides, but it's they also do good work for the general public too. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, I guess I guess I would point out that <clears throat> if you have a sportsman's organization in your state. Join it, you know, be part of it, and uh, get send involved. Your, yeah, send your yeah. money in to be a member, and yeah, and they're the ones that are, you know, speaking fight. on your behalf. Yeah, yeah, that's how that all works. You might not have time to go down to a legislature, but you, when you support an organization, they have somebody that's there to fight for you. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Got any stories from last fall, Jeff? Oh boy, do I got some stories. Did you deer hunt? <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like you were everywhere around the country. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to keep up with Rick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> no, he's younger than you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he, he? Uh, but he turned in, he turned into the '60s club with us now too. You know. Oh yeah, good for him. God yeah. love him. You yeah. know, he's 60 now. Is he? So now there's yeah. actually there's three of us in the '60 club, and we got Mikey Stevens in the '70 club. So he'll be 71 this year. So what you're telling me, there's a chance, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's still hope for you, Jeff. There's still hope. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I enjoy my age. I don't. Oh, I do too. I think it's, uh, I'm fine, <laughs> fine with it. Yeah. In in your mind, you're <clears throat> probably still 25 like I am, right? Oh, shit. I went up six, seven mountains already. Yeah. You know, I yeah. didn't even leave the truck. <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes your body fights back at you when you oh. <laughs> try to overdo it. But <laughs> that's all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've learned, though, to because I'm still, when I get going, I'm still in the mindset that I got to walk, you know, four miles an hour through the woods. And I, I finally, last year, I finally started relaxing a little bit and say, you know, I don't really have to do that, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's the one thing that you realize that I I have realized um, that I I enjoy things more. Do you know what I'm saying? I enjoy those moments. I, I mean, this year down in uh, Illinois is playing the game with the deer. Um, you know, plotting my tactics with them, and you know, working on specific bucks or whatever. And this year was the first year. Uh, in a long time that I I actually enjoyed it more than anything, yep. you know? Yeah, because it's about the hunt anyway, really, right? Yeah, it's yeah, exactly about the hunt. Yeah, you don't have to kill the animals to enjoy what you're doing, you know? Yeah, too many people lose sight of that, you know? It's almost like, <clears throat> oh, I know in the past, you know, people always you get a deer this year, and I go, no, let a couple go, I didn't shoot one. And it's almost like they can't believe stuff like that, or why would you do that? But it ain't that ain't what it's about, you know. No, it's not. It's absolutely not what it's about. 
And I've got I, more about that when I got older, too. Yeah, Liz looks at, thinks I'm crazy whenever I – she just doesn't – she gets it more now, but for a long time. Yeah. Couldn't understand, like, why are you – why are you letting them go? Why do you let anything – Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I get to hunt longer that way, number one. Oh, yeah. But – yeah, for sure. <clears throat> but uh, the only complaints yeah. Deb would have, I've said it before, is because she knows I'm I'm waiting on a big one and the meat stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta yeah. take the back straps yeah. and the yeah. inside loins out and grind the rest <laughs> into burger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sue's so like, well, you know, I'd be I'd be in there two, three days hunting, and I'd call her at night or whatever, and she goes, "You ain't got one yet." I goes, "Well, I just got here. Well, what are you waiting for?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sue understands a little differently because she's an avid hunter herself. Oh yeah, so. yeah, she's uh, that she's girl. hardcore. Yeah, yeah, she is hardcore. No, no question about it. Where were yeah. oh, when we were in Alaska? She was sending us pictures of herself in the stand. Oh, it was yeah, it was yeah, amazing, she was wasn't out it? There. She's, yeah, all the time. That was awesome. I had one time where we're a, we're up there on the backside of the um, lake. The lake. And we had dragged the stand way out there for her, you know. And I uh, got up the next morning. It was snowing like a banshee out. And I said, uh, yeah, well, you ready to go? She said, yeah. She, she went all the way out there. I had to get her out there because usually I put the little trail markers out there. So she, she'll go miles if I put the trail markers out. <clears throat> but got her out there. She sat out there. And I hiked out, left. I come back down. I come way out on the backside. And I'm hiking up the road. Some guy comes down the road. He goes, uh, I goes, hey, how you doing? He goes, pretty good. He goes, you ain't going to believe what I saw. I goes, what's that? He goes, I just saw this blonde chick way the hell out in the woods just sitting there in a tree stand. I goes, really? And I was <laughs> I was kind of dumbfounded. I goes, who the hell would be way out there? And he goes, yeah, it's way back up there on the backside of that by, behind the lake. I'm going, geez, that's my wife. <laughs> the guy goes, and he's telling me, he goes, yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'd like to be the guy who's married to that woman out there. <laughs> <clears throat> I goes, well, it's my wife. She's out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> and she shot a buck. Yeah, she shot a nice one. Yeah. She shot a <laughs> she shot a few nice ones. Yeah. She don't yeah, she's pretty I know you guys do a lot of <clears throat> local hunting together. Um does she do many trips with you? Yeah. Like yeah. Pat West and yeah, stuff? she does, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she she um <clears throat> she's she's such a good girl. She'll just do anything, you know. It's usually I'm the one that's saying, "Okay, we're gonna go hunt." She's all right, you know. Good. Yeah, but she's uh, girls like that are you know they're special. You know? Yeah, that's the way Deb is. But I I feel so bad that she just can't do it anymore with her yeah. back <clears throat> issues and stuff because yeah. she used to go to New Brunswick with us. Yeah, she'd be the only be be six or eight guys in her yeah 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 thank you my wife is the kind of special where she doesn't hunt but she doesn't care how much i hunt her yeah and yeah. that's that's, that, a, that's what always mattered to me she says have a great yeah, time yeah yeah so supportive so if, if you have one that doesn't hunt at least if if you can find one that's supportive it's a big help oh yeah by all means that's because the, i have heard you know we all have the horror stories yeah. of so all you young fellas tough. out there choose wisely yeah <laughs> get yourself a good one yeah <laughs> yeah life is long <clears throat> yeah 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 it costs a lot of money <laughs> yeah all right well, let's go hunting what are, you, what are you gonna talk about first well i don't know you know um where'd you start hunting first your first hunt last year um well i started of course, of course locally i you know i got a chance to get up in the the north woods and that didn't go too well. Sue and I went up there. In, New Hampshire, uh, or Maine? Yeah, yeah. New Hampshire, yeah. I was up in New Hampshire. I got <clears> on the tail <throat> end of that. That it just that hard pack was horrible. But I had uh, we had set a blind up for Sue and got into some deer in one area and set her on that. And I I got on to another area and I hiked out out in there. I, anyway, six six point two five miles. Typically, I get into areas where I always catch a, you know, a good track or something like that, or where the deer were. This year, everywhere I went, I didn't really see much for sign at all. Just young deer. Hmm. It was kind of so, somewhat discouraging. Better then, come back up here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been <laughs> wanting me to come up here for a long time, you know. And then I got sick. <clears throat> I don't know what I got. I got something just that just about killed me for that one. Good Pretty, timing, huh? Yeah, it was good timing. <clears throat> then uh, <clears throat> I went to, uh, I did that sicka hunt down Maryland. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. I've I I didn't um, I I was asked to go last year with uh, Matt and Greg, and it just didn't pan out because all my other stuff I was doing hunting. And, but this year they asked me again, and I said, "Yeah, I'll go." But what it did it did when I I, I had I used to go to my place out in Illinois, and it kind of conflicted with that, so I. I had to blow them off again. I felt bad because I wanted to go there because something different. It was unique. Yeah. Uh, but I finally got the opportunity. I called them up. I got back from uh, I can't remember what it was, maybe South Dakota or one of those out there, and I uh, asked them, "Is there any more dates still open? You guys going down?" They said, "Yeah, we're going down for the three day season." I said, "You mind if I jump aboard?" And they said, "Yeah, come on." So <clears throat> I don't know if you're familiar with the sicker down in maryland yeah jason is de plazo show. yeah is that exactly. sicker with an er no well that's oh sicker yeah, yeah. is that like nova <laughs> you got a nova jeff no no it's nova. a nova nova yeah. nova <laughs> yeah jason shot one there uh i think two years ago yeah as a matter of fact when i was going down he was texting me he goes you coming down here he says oh yeah yeah so i was talking to him on the way down but those things uh um, back in the early 1900s, they 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 brought them over from Europe, right? And they started. Uh, as a matter of fact, they started at the Wyo Ranch in Texas, and that's that's where all the exotics started in the country was out there, and they dispersed them all through. But they put them three places in the country, which is Texas, um, Maryland, I think the other one's West Virginia or something like that, and. In the particular ones in Maryland, they started with five or six of them. And uh, this one gentleman brought them in, put them on a little island. I don't know I, I don't know the name of the island, but they started with five or six of them, and they just flourished from there. And they lived down in that frag grass down by the Chesapeake Bay area. And uh, I don't know if you've seen that frag grass. You've probably seen it on the side of the highway. It's, yeah. That stuff is... Ten feet tall. Oh, yeah. It's like walking through frozen spaghetti, for God's sakes. It's horrible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to go down there, and um, I wanted. I brought that buck hammer with me because I wanted to shoot one with the buck hammer. And they kept telling me, he says, Jeff, you're not going to... It's it's different. You, we got to get down in the swamps. It's nasty. That frag grass is a nightmare. And I said, well, it can't be too bad. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit i was like so we're hunting you hunt in the um the um the reservations which is the national reservations and they have seasons for them and they're, they're only so many days and they so many days in the month and they, they can open it up but they only open it up um um only for hunting, and you can't go in there. there I didn't know you can't go in there off season. You can't hike it. You can't do nothing. Hmm. So it's it's uh it's there's a few of them down there. The one we were on was it was like fifty something thousand acres or something there. Oof, that's pretty, it's a pretty big. big area. Can anybody go? I mean, you just buy a license. Yeah, you can buy a license. There's a it's tricky because you got to buy the license. Then you have to go if you want to hunt in those those preserves or the national refuges. You got to buy another uh, pass for that, so uh, you have to kind of you know navigate through that. But yeah, you can go on there. Then they open the gate up at like three thirty in the morning, you know, and you get to go in, and you got to be out by a certain time. And they might have that three day season, but that's it. Then they shut it down. So, <clears throat> do the what what I, I I had heard about the Sika deer. I had a moose client once that lives right down there, yeah. and, and he hunts him. He was telling me all about it in the past. And <clears throat> number one, what I think is interesting is that it seems like the Sika is an exotic that was introduced that does not have a really negative impact. You know, you take like hogs for yep. instance; they just they they procreate too fast and they destroy everything. Yep. You know, or 
um, yeah, anything that's invasive, you know, things that come in that take over and wildlife, peacock bass down in Florida. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that sort of thing. Snakeheads. So, yeah. yeah, but it seems like the, the sicka deer, number one, they stay pretty localized, which I'm always curious about yeah. that. Yeah they, they, yeah, they stay right in that certain areas. They don't migrate out of it. What the reason is, I don't know. But that frag grass actually is an evasive grass. So um, what they do is, uh, there's certain areas where they burn it, they try to control it, and some of the areas they can in the swamps, you know. So what are the, what do they feed on then if it's all that grass? They feed on that frag grass. Oh, they do. Oh yeah. Before so it, so it's a positive benefit. Then it's a positive, yeah. And boy, the dang thing's the only way they like, you know, like seventy, eighty pounds, maybe hundred pounds for a, a that buck mature. hammer was that big enough for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about knock me out of the tree stand, shoot him. <laughs> they probably don't have any uh, coyotes or any predators in there either. In that kind of a, sw- they wouldn't. Live no, in I. That stuff. The only thing I saw was a gray fox barking yeah. along. You know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they wouldn't bother them. <clears throat> oh, so they live in that frag grass. So, and there are pockets that, you know, transitional areas out of the frag grass where they come through, go into the frag grass. Um, in a lot of those areas down there, like the preserves and uh, the w- refuge, there's a lot of um, outfitters around that, and they do uh, feed the deer, you know. Um, uh, you know, for their hunters and so on and so forth. But we were, you know, we stayed away from that stuff. We were in the yeah. free-ranging. You're in the big, <clears throat> down there. In the big wood swamp woods. Yep. Hey, Hal here. Just wanted to tell you we're excited about uh, our partnership with Minus 33. Minus 33 specialized merino wool base layers for outdoor enthusiasts. From tops and bottoms to hats, socks, gloves. And our gear is going to keep you warm and comfortable no matter what adventure you're on, especially those big woods ones. We're a fifth-generation family, owned and operated, a New Hampshire wool and textile manufacturer. They have over 106 years of wool and expertise, and they started manufacturing wool and socks, the Mountain Heritage ones, in New Hampshire in 2018 with the idea that a quality product affordable pricing, and can be worn and loved from season to season. No matter what uh, your experience level or skill is, so no one should feel uncomfortable or ill-prepared in the outdoor community. Having a reliable gear is one of the first steps towards a lifetime of passion or whatever activity it is. And my caveat to that is, is you got to wear your woolies. Cotton is death. As you all know, Big Woods Bucks is devoted to promoting the best equipment for tracking and still hunting the Big Woods. Part of that equation for success is the sights that sit on your hunting rifle. We've chosen Skinner Sights as the company to produce our custom-built BWB Tracker Series Peep Sight. It's constructed of solid steel, has our custom ghost ring, and was co-developed by some of the best trackers in the world. To get yours, go to bigwoodsbucks.com and click on the optics tab. Hey folks, Rick Labby here from Big Woods Bucks. I'm here today to tell you about our new packs. This is our new small pack, which the first time I saw it, Chris showed it to me and I said, that's the Nuna, because that's the perfect pack if I'm getting on a buck track at noon. And uh, it'll hold the sandwich, your water, a little bit of gear. It's uh, virgin wool, made in USA. Waterproof resistant, has a liner on the inside. Um, it is a great pack. This pack, this is our newest large pack, which um, when I used to carry the older pack, I always wore suspenders because it bothered my hips a little bit. So we designed one with shoulder straps, and this is a great pack. It takes the weight off your hips, puts it onto your shoulders. It's got a uh, GPS pouch right here in the top you slide in. Same deal, it's, it's water resistant on the inside, got that liner. Um, it's a perfect pack. So I go to bigwoodsbucks.com, get yours today, and I'll see you on the track. So the, trick, the trick is, and is you got to get down, go as far as you can 
you know, down in the backside of those swamps. And when you think you're as far as you can, keep on going. Then when you're dead tired, that's probably where you want to be. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, so they make a, uh, don't they make a, a, a bugle almost like an elk? Yeah. Similar? Yeah. I, it's, yeah, it's more like a, like a red stag. I don't know if you ever heard red okay. stag before, yeah. kind of like yeah. a roar. Oh yeah. 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 And that's kind of what they sound like. like kind Do of they bark mixture. too? Um, they say they bark. I didn't hear any bark. I heard a couple of roars. That's about it. Um, hmm. But they, they move during the morning, early mornings. They don't typically move during the day much, you know, in late afternoons. So that's when they move. But they're, boy, the track is only like as big as your thumb. <clears throat> little tiny thing it's, oh. it's it's surprising i bet if you saw one in person make that that roar that it would be surprising coming out of yeah. that little animal <clears throat> yeah and uh so we got that we got through those swamps and God, i had i had my pack on my my tree climber my cameras man i must have had 60 pounds of shit on my back and going through all that crap and i took a video of it going down through there you know and it's it, it's like you're going for war, you know. And we're two and a half miles from the truck. Walk in, get down in those swamps, you know, go through the frag grass. <laughs> so it's not on my bucket list. I think you would. I think you'd enjoy it. I don't you. I don't think you would enjoy the tree stand portion of it because you got to haul in a climber or a saddle, whatever. But I think you enjoy. I, I think you enjoy it. Yeah. It's He's, a, he spent a lot of time trying to find a track you like with those things. Yeah, bring a magnifying <laughs> glass because they're that small. That's what I said. I said, you ain't tracking these things. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. Yeah, so, so you get down through that frag grass, you know, and you're just trying to find a tree, find the run. What I found out is when you're in that frag grass and, the, you know, the hummocks, what they do is they, they kind of navigate through that grass and they bet on those hummocks. And when you get to one, you can see where they bed. Hmm. They're just it's flat little hummock, and they're in there. You see many other hunters? No, just uh, just Greg and um, Matt that I went with. We didn't see anybody. We saw, we did see it, uh, a couple of the guys at the gate, you know. But it's such a big area that, and if you're going way down deep where we go, you don't see anybody. Most guys are like standing next to the walk paths or something like that. And how did all of you do? Uh, we did, we got a couple the first round and we got one the second round, the second season. So I got what's supposed to be, supposed to be a nice one, you know, a big stag, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think my dog was bigger than that thing, but it's, uh, <clears throat> but it's real, it's really neat. It's, it's a whole different ball how, game. How do they taste? Uh, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favorite thing has always been caribou. And caribou's been at the top of my right. list for yeah, meat. Caribou's great, yeah. And I'll tell you what, that meat from that 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 little animal is amazing. I brought it home and I hung it up in my garage and I off my lift of my my car lift and I scun it all out and we butchered it all up and Sue and I, you know, packed it all in. And we cooked a steak that night. It was like wow, no no gamey taste at all, none whatsoever, not even a tint of it. It was the closest thing I could relate to roast beef. Because yeah. we relate everything to chicken and roast beef, but that is definitely the closest thing. Yeah. It was amazing. And they got, their horns are like little three points on a side or something. Yeah, yeah, three by threes. You know, those particular cicadae and those, that subspecies, typically a three by three, six point or whatever. There's a big mature. Yeah. Big They're mature. like a miniature elk. Yeah. Antler. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and they, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, what you try to do is you just try to get down in there and deep find those little trails that they're on or whatever. And what I, the, the area that I found, um, it's, it's all s a swampy, open, like open uh, hemlocks, but enough, and you know, on the edge of the frag grass, but you can see the water. You know, there's just water. You gotta, you're hunting in hip boots all day long because you're just going through all that mud and that. It's, yep. it's pretty tough. Then uh, basically you're sitting there waiting, something that you don't like to do that I, I enjoy. I, <laughs> I would I would say I, I never 
thought about that hunt too much ever since I'd heard about it, but um, bringing <clears> up the whole, the uh, the meat part of it, it's intriguing just to get something, you know, to put uh, something different in the freezer and try it. Yeah, I'm sold on it. No yeah. question. I'm going back because for that reason, if, if I don't care if I shoot a, a mature stag, it's that meat that counts. Yeah. So you just allowed one? No, you allowed a, a stag and two hinds, they call them, which is the females. <clears throat> <laughs> and they're small yeah yeah which which is uh you know when you're talking about getting it for the meat sometimes especially you know you take you kill yeah. moose in maine you've got so much meat now you got to get rid of it you know you can't yeah. consume that much really i mean it's a lot to yeah although it still tastes the same after three years so <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah. but yeah i mean just to go down and get a little sick of meat might be fun yeah, they're just little brown animals, you know. And like that buck hammer, I mean, we talked about that today. That I mean, I'm that's a nice gun. Mm. That's a super nice gun, and I put a I put a peep sight on it. That gonna be a deer hunting rifle now? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm still an automatic guy, yeah. but but that peep sight was the key on those things, you yeah. know, because when they come out, that buck that came out. Um, it was probably the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes of light set, low dark, low light condition. And I put that high vis on the front of that with that peep sight. It just, it was like, it did the trick. Yeah. And you could see, you could hear them coming. You could hear trickle in the water. Like somebody turned the low faucet on oh, and yeah. you could hear the dripping. And I'm kind of looking out there and I could see the water and you can see the, it was the neatest thing that you know you could probably relate to it you could see kind of the reflection in the water then you could see way off say about 100 yards you could see ripples coming in the water and what you do is you're looking and what i was doing i was i was following the ripples back to where they came closer and closer the closer you know then you can kind of pinpoint to where he's coming through and i got to a point where the the, the ripples are tight and i knew he was coming that way because you can't see him until they're on top of you. And he was literally 12 yards. And he and I didn't think he was going to pop up in the area they did because it's the thickest stuff that you can imagine. And he popped right on this little hummock in front of me. And I was already at that point waiting for him. And when I popped up that buck hammer and that high-vis sight just popped right up, that was that was pretty cool. Hmm. So, and, the, and that's when the fun began. <clears throat> dragging that thing out you know because all those other guys are gone and i'm still in there you know because i don't i'm not giving up and uh, i learned something about onyx you know <laughs> that i never knew <laughs> yeah was it handy so, oh yeah I, now i now yeah yeah so i'm just learning i've always had a montana my whole life you know, in that, that form of GPS. And the, the Onyx is relatively kind of new for me. So you learn as you go oh, along. Oh, yeah. I'm still learning that. So yeah. I had no clue. So when you when you pop a waypoint in, okay, and you want to go back to that waypoint, that little that indicator, you press twice. Yeah, it gives you a little blue cone. Yeah. I get, well, I had no idea. Dude. <laughs> That's right. the way no, you go. No, I was looking at the thing. I'm looking at my yardage and what I was doing my whole this whole time I had my, my onyx on, I was reducing my yardage and I knew if my, my yardage was reduced and I was getting closer to my stand at nighttime. You're so cute, Jeff. I swear to God. <laughs> that's a policy. So that's how I you know, I had no idea. We're gonna have a little we ought to have a Big Woods Bucks classroom lesson well, for I've everyone, been, huh? Well, I've been asking Neil for the longest time. Man, I need I need a little bit of insight on this. So, so, <laughs> so there's two things I have. I so I I texted Greg and Matt. They're already back at the truck. I right? said, oh, I I said I got one. It says looks like a pretty nice one. So just, they said, all right, so dragging it back. So I'm looking at my Onyx and my yacht is like 900 yards to this one point. And I got that thing, and I'm dragging. It felt like I was dragging for two hours, and they're calling me, where are you? <laughs> I'm going, I'm dragging this thing back to this the point right here. And uh, I swear to God, I dragged for an hour and a half, and I only went like 100 yards, but I went in a circle. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's funny that Neil was the one that told you because Neil's the one that educated me yeah, on that. Too. Yeah. I'm, I'm making fun of you, but, yeah. but I, it was a, a little way after. You had after. to be told. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Well, this is early on, I think, when oh. I first met Neil, and he's like, "Oh, oh. yeah, you know, Neil's our tech guy." So, oh yeah, I figured goes on that out on my own. You know, <clears throat> wow, you figured that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You your, know your hands were probably shaking and well, yeah, it twice. probably because I hit it <laughs> yeah. twice by accident. <laughs> yeah. and I go, the old that? age was kicking in, and yeah. he's shaking like a leaf yeah. on a tree. And oh, look at that. Yeah, now you got your uh, <clears throat> your distance counter on there. Oh, too, I, your, your compass and your distance yep. and everything. Yeah. yeah, you can range your yardage, everything. Yeah. So. I still hadn't talked to Neil, right? And I'm, and of course, Greg and those guys, they don't have Onyx, right? So I can't get any information off of them. So the <laughs> next morning, I'm going back in there. I left my stand in there. I want to go back and shoot a hind, you know? So I'm going down in there. And, uh, and I can say, you got to go through this crap that's the swamp. And you're up, you're up to your waist in mud, you know? And your gut sticks, and you try not to fall over, you know. We're, it, it's pretty intense going down through there. So I got the biggest thing that you don't want to do is go in that frag grass in the dark, you know. That's the first time I've ever been down there. When you go in a new location and you're going in the dark and you don't <laughs> know where you are, what you're doing, you have no clue. So I got in that frag grass because I'm looking at my thing and I'm going. And good thing I had my Montana on me because I had plopped a waypoint in. Because I always bring a backup. I got in that frag grass and I hit my headlamp. Matt was, they were up on the hill watching me and they're in their stands already. I was in that frag grass for an hour going around in circles, swearing and yelling, going, What the who in their right mind? I said, This is the worst shit. It's like frozen spaghetti in there. You can't get out of that crap. I finally, after a while, I get out of there and I end up at under Matt's stand. I goes, Matt, where's my stand? He goes, It's over there. <laughs> So I ended up getting out. I finally got out of there, you know, and that's when I <laughs> got a hold of Neil. You didn't put your stand as a waypoint? I did, but what I was doing is that I didn't know that that prompt, when you press that twice, it actually locks your waypoint and you can just you yeah. rotate your phone. I had no idea. That's how. Well, yeah, that's, geez, the, that's a, one of the best features in it. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I didn't yeah. figure that out until I talked to Neil. <laughs> it's so your compass, I, really. I mean, because it's... Yeah, you know. so how I was doing it, I was doing, I was looking at my yardage. You know, you still get that line, but I was looking at my yardage, and if if I was walking, if, my, if I was 900 yards and I was reducing down to 850, 750, I know I was getting closer to my stand by that. And if I went off a, a, a different way, my yardage increased, well, I need to go, go back that way. That's how I was doing it for the longest oh. time. Well, yeah. before I figured it out, what I did was I would just take my compass out. I'd look if I was trying to go, if I was going back to the truck or whatever, and <clears throat> I would take my Onyx out, Yeah. and I'd pull up the waypoint because I, I always set my – I always keep mine as north up. That way I can mm -hmm. keep yeah. things in my mind. Yeah. So if it's north up – and then I just, it shows you where you are. You've got your little yeah. dot. And then it shows you where you are. All you got to do is look at it and say, okay, the phone up is north. And you can just look. And I mean, it isn't going to give you an exact bearing that way, yeah. but it'll tell you I got to go southeast or whatever. Yeah. And then take your compass and go southeast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you learned the hard way anyway. Oh, I learned the hard Yeah, I put a lot of miles on. <laughs> yeah. But I, that, I that's probably the Polish in you, right? Yeah, it's the Polak. Yeah. yeah, I mean that get rubbed off of me somewhere down the line, you know. <laughs> I tend to rub it off on other people, so sometimes don't follow me. <clears throat> I do like that. Uh, what the biggest uh, thing I like about the Onyx, and I've always enjoyed, is that wind app. And as a bow hunter, mm. you know, because you can. I mean, there's some spots where if you're working a, I mean, if you're working a particular air like a particular swamp, and it's a and a small swamp, and you need to kind of get into those stands um, in some other direction because it's so tight, and you might – it's not a call for me to have three or four stands in kind of one little one-acre swamp because I want to – if I know those bucks are laying in that swamp and they're using that as a bedding area, I want to approach it at a certain wind. So with that 
that wind app on Onyx, it fine tunes it. You can fine tune it on just a north wind, or you can fine tune it as a, a north southwest wind, or you know, or east. What do you mean? It tells you the wind? Yeah, it gives you. How the hell does it <clears throat> tell you what the wind is? You, what it does, it, it, it if you look on the on the uh, you press the app, it gives you um, on the Onyx. You press the wind app on it, right? And it pops up, and it gives you the compass, okay? And you have your stand, your your waypoint, your stand. So you have a stand, whatever you name it, stand one, okay? You can pop that way, that waypoint up, and you put Optimum Wind app on it. You press that, and the little prompt will come up. Uh, uh, it's actually a, a um, the uh, the compass readings. It says north, northwest, so on and so forth. Whatever which way the wind is blowing, if you press, uh, say you want to hunt a southern wind, right? Oh. And you press that northern, it'll block it out so it's just a north wind. So you approach it from the south, okay? So it's really not <clears throat> telling you the wind. you got to know what the wind is. No, it tells you the wind is. How does it do that? In well, their app. Yeah, it tells you. It's it tied into weather. Yeah, it's tied into the weather. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, but the... The weather's just telling you what a prevailing wind well, is. Well, no. There's well, good. <clears throat> I mean, it can be, if it's swirling a lot, obviously. There's a delay on up. it. Yeah. But, but well, like, I, there's apps like windy.com and stuff that yeah. show you <clears throat> all the, the real-time wind, yeah. what it's doing, like on a national level. Right. But that's that's the prevailing wind. Because you get in the woods and it blows four directions every minute. Well, yeah. I mean, sure. I'm sure there's... There's instances where it doesn't work, yeah, but for the most part, it works. Right. So works for the prevailing wind. I so guess. what I what I'll do like that morning, I'll check. You know, if I have 14 different stands, like Illinois this year, I had like 14 stands out, and I don't think I hunted one stand one particular day in series. It just every it was every day it was something different because of that. I was looking at my wind app, and I go, oh, well, I can't hunt that because I need an east wind. Or I need a southeast wind, or a combination of east southeast, or whatever. You know, Neil is rubbing off on you. Oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that he doesn't rub off on me. I know I've known that for. I'm really, really strict with wind when it comes to archery hunting. Yeah, I you, won't touch a stand for weeks if I don't get the correct wind on it. Because I think probably mostly when people are archery hunting there. They're hunting deer that know about people. You know what I mean? They. Yeah, they're they're yeah they're yeah they're educated <clears throat> by human contact, whether around farms or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it, even it, if they're not, the wind. You know, if you're in a stand, <clears throat> it's like Dan Infault. We talked to him. Well, that that one hasn't come out yet. It will be coming. But mm. talking to him and and. Uh, his approach, he's the same way. You know, he's religious about the wind. Religious. If, if he goes into a spot. Yeah, but he was hunting areas that are pressured, too. His biggest bucks he was finding was in areas that were hunted. And yeah. he would just select out the spot. But I'm just saying, I mean, well, I put the, people my whole <clears throat> life in the same stand every day, no matter what the wind was, and they killed deer, you know. Because those deer wouldn't be there every day to know what was going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, well, you know as well, dude, your best chances in high-pressure areas getting a mature buck is the first few days. Right. Uh, once they figure out that you're there, you know. Right. It's. But I don't hunt them areas, so no, I don't know no. that. Well, <laughs> I do. I hunt. I know. You know so. well, this is like in Alabama this year. So we went down to Alabama, and we hunted in a high-pressure area. So <clears throat> what it does, it takes you first, it takes you a few days to kind of dial in. And if you're an archery hunter, you understand it. I mean, once you start dialing in movements and and figure out what these deer are doing, especially with high pressure areas. So, high pressure areas are like for me is like um, the guys will use the same trail, the the same roads. They're gonna put their stands up in the same areas. Well, the deer understand that. They understand that. What you got to do is you got to get past those areas because the movements are not in. Most of the movements are in that area. There are deer that come through those areas. You got to get past that beyond those areas where the deer are comfortable now. They're out of that range. So yeah, what, they they hit them areas <clears throat> at night. 
Yeah. So what we're doing is just, I told, uh, you know, the Matt and, uh, and Brian, we need to get past those areas because we weren't seeing a lot of deer. And once you figure that out and you dial into those, and then we got into the deer. What they were doing, they were just staying out of the range of those high pressure areas, and that's where their movements were. So <clears throat> you got to you you learn that as you're going along, but it's not like the up here the big woods are different, you know. So you <clears throat> hunted Alaska, Maryland, Illinois, South Dakota, so, Nebraska, yeah, Alabama, Alabama, yeah, New Hampshire, New Hampshire this year, yeah, <clears throat> a lot of traveling, yeah, yeah, we had uh, uh, we had a lot of fun in Nebraska. I went Rick in. Uh, He's a riot, you know. One thing I can say about Rick, he he is what you think he is, you know. He's just a hard charge and go getter. He's no question about it. Um, yeah. We went to South Dakota together. His approach was different than my approach. I was, I wanted the, I was more into the whitetail, um, and he was more into the muleys. And the muleys are in the high country in the upper. And white tails are generally down in the low coolies and so on and so forth. So I, m my approach is more of uh, stand hunting, sitting, because those coolies are sh they're, they're short windows and valleys, and they they pop in and out of them. And you're better off just standing s standing still, and waiting and waiting them up because they're going to come through sooner or later. And muleys are a different approach. Matter of fact, <laughs> I was. Uh, <clears throat> I was on a stand one day, and I shot that, that beautiful buck there, and I saw that buck, oh, it was like a day before, and he was like 800 yards out, and he was standing next to a fence line with a doe just standing there, and I got my binoculars on, I'm going, geez, that looks like a pretty big buck out there, you know, just standing there. And I had no, I had no option to get up and move on because he's in the wide open, and I'm hunting down on the edge of a coulee in the thick where the whitetail are. So I saw him, then he moves off with the doe, and off he goes. So the next day I went back there, maybe it'd be an opportunity to, you know, maybe if he's kicking around, I saw some other bucks in that area. Back where he was standing, <clears throat> you mean? Back where I was, yeah. I figured he, if he's chasing does, chances are he might be still in that general area that I was hunting. I so Rick is on muleys, you know. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there, and it was like, I don't know what time it was. It had to have been like, pff, I don't know one o'clock or something like that. Well, I look way out in front of me and I see some guy walking out the ridge out in front of me, I go, who the hell is that out there? And I've got my binoculars on, I'm going, I'm looking, I'm looking, I goes, and he's scooting across, he goes, the hell's he, that's Rick. <laughs> I goes, he's cutting you yeah, off. he's cutting me. I go, son of a bitch, what's he doing way over here? And I'm trying to text him, you know, and he's like, he's looking for the muleys, you know. He had no idea I was over there. He's just... Going about his business, off he goes, you know. <laughs> I took a picture yeah. of him. I showed it to him that night. He says, hey, who's this guy? He goes, that's me. He goes, yeah, he walked right in front of my blinded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. <clears throat> yeah, we had a yeah. lot of fun, though. <clears throat> yeah, it looked like a good trip. It was fun, yeah. He shot He shot a nice muley, and I shot a nice whitetail. And, yeah, that, we got that all on film, too. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Is that coming out soon? I don't know if I get Brian ever to make it. But. <laughs> <laughs> Brian ain't making it. He's getting somebody to yeah, make it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> hey. No, but it's, it's it's fun traveling around, you know. You get to um, you get to learn different things, you know. And that's truly when I started traveling. I mean, I've been hunting New Hampshire my whole entire life. And I've been pretty successful at it. Um, but what I really learned hab habit and deer movement and stuff like that when I started traveling and you get to see more deer and you get to see what more of what they do you know and they all have kind of basically the same habits you know whether you're hunting out west hunting south you're hunting up here they relatively do the same things you know yeah <clears throat> they look for they look for women and they eat that's their downfall lay down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, they're in that's what I focus on the women. Yeah. What not so much during the pre rut because I focus on them. 
But when that rut starts, I don't focus on them at all. I, I focus on where the girls are because yeah. that's what they're looking for. Yeah. <clears throat> that uh, the second hunt is where you were at when we did the uh, the Tucker the the. Yeah, the interview with Tucker, right? Weren't you going to come? Yeah, I was supposed to go to that thing because I wanted to go up there, you know, meet him and so on and so forth. And um, and I, I had already lined that thing up. Yep. Yeah. That. That was a good time with him, anyway. Yeah. 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 I just like the perspective of. Um, I like the hunting and fishing aspect of just talking that stuff. I don't care about all the other. Well, that's what we wanted to do. Yeah. We didn't. If you want to. <clears throat> If you want to know what Tuck is about politically, you can, yeah, you can get that on every yeah. station there is, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what our intent was was to see the person who he is and how he yeah. lives, what he likes to do, and and yeah, I knew I mean, he liked to hunt and fish, so yeah. he's got main roots. So that's you know everyone's yeah. interested in that. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. what I wanted to you know to understand the man. You know, I didn't I don't care about the political about that i mean it's like yeah. anybody <clears throat> yeah there was a few haters that wondered why we had him on but it's like yeah i think you're gonna get just, that no matter where you yeah. are and that's okay i mean they have their beliefs i mean it's like whatever I mean, very few though it's very yeah. few of them. <laughs> so it's a it ain't one percent you know yeah yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is is that you know with that experience you realize just um it's just a, you know, welcome to sin. Open this door up and come on yeah. in. Make yourself at home. Yeah. No one else there. Just yeah. him. Yeah. Just we, fantastic. Yeah. He was on know? the phone when we got there, remember? He was on the phone. He said, yeah, come on in. Go over there. We're going to set up at that table. Get your stuff in here. And Yeah. yeah. yeah just welcoming this could be. And, you know, no reason. Um, I, what, I, what I like about doing something like that is anytime you can get someone that's got a, a high profile like he does that has a similar interest and that can, you know, show everyone that we're all, we're all in the same boat. We all got to be, yeah, which, we have this similar thing, together. right? What, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, right? If we don't stand together, we're going to lose it. I think uh, that's, uh, that's, I mean, our, yeah. our, our <clears throat> lifestyle and what we love to do is under attack all the time, whether anyone wants to believe it or not. Oh yeah. That's what we talked and, about with Matt. You know, it's yeah. just, we just got to <clears throat> keep up the good fight and, and try to stick together with things, you know. There's no sense of um, arguing about the finer points of things, you know. That's dumb, really, you know. We have more in common than things that are not in common. Yeah, and I mean, that goes, which we've talked about it before, it doesn't matter whether you hound hunt yourself or whether you trap yourself, you have to support you have to support the guys yeah. that are doing it. You yeah. Know, it's the only way it's going to work. Yeah, because it doesn't stop with one thing. It keeps going. It, you know, just, they're just going to go after something else, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you got to support each other. Yeah. Uh, whether it's the simple th hiking, you know? Hikers should support. We should support hiking. They should support it. It's still outdoor activity all the way around, you know? Yeah. Even fishermen, you know, they yeah. don't. You know, once they, if they ever got rid of hunting, you know, fishing's the next target, right? Because it's a, yeah. something alive, you know. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, for sure. yeah. So you just gotta. We eat fish too. Yeah, and again, it's just the, it's the, it's the vocal small minorities. What it is. Yeah. With nothing better going on in their life to than to disrupt somebody else's. Yeah. Right? You know, I get up every morning. I just want to, you know, I just go to work, kiss my wife, enjoy the day. Yeah. You know, go hunt and fish and do things that is enjoyable, you know. And it it's not um I feel fairly confident it's going to be okay in our lifetime. Yeah. But I'm thinking more about my kids and grandkids, you yeah. know, and and you think about the freedoms we have and how mm. great, you know, the, to go out and do what we want, and recreate and enjoy everything around us and and with with things like uh what's happening with these land purchases and turning them to carbon credits and all that crap mm. you know that that shuts it off yeah you know all those uses are not allowed on those on a lot of those properties so yeah um you know if you don't if you don't speak up you're gonna lose it yeah yeah for sure staying together yeah so you got a buck out <clears throat> there in nebraska uh i got one out in uh south dakota and he was a oh, south dakota yeah he was a cocker yeah that was <laughs> 
that was that was unique. That was a lot of fun. I mean, if finally, uh, did you see that little video I put? I I was stuck on top of that hill. I put the blind on top of the hill, kind of overlooking. I don't think I saw that one. Yeah, uh, we got like fifty mile an hour winds. No, I didn't. Well, see I was that. hanging on for dear life. I was inside <laughs> that tent hanging on to everything. Finally, it it blew off. Took me off. Took the the blind that went flying. All my food, everything went down. <laughs> so. <laughs> So <clears throat> we finally got that off the hill. I said, ah, that's kind of the wrong spot because we're trying to get a, a distant shot and we're gun hunting at that point. And all the deer are moving down below, you know, through the through this ditch and this coulee. And so I need to get that down there. So we had that uh, folded the, that blind up and got down in there and going to get in there the next morning. And uh, <clears throat> probably get, you know, instead of a 500-yard shot, I'd have a 200-yard shot or less, you know. And I had a nice 11-pointer come by that uh, the just before the wind picked up. And he, I was looking at him. He was nice, you know. Um, and I was thinking about it, but I just got caught up in the moment, you know, just watching him go by. I thought that was just so cool, you know. Yeah. And sometimes I do that, and I'll just... So the next morning, I get down there. Then at that point, Rick had already got his mule deer. <clears throat> and uh, I had pulled out from the other spot that I was, where I saw that, that big buck. And uh, I went down because there was not a lot going in there back that other spot. So I pulled out and I went down, uh, I, think, I don't know how many miles, quite a, quite a ways a ways. But I wanted to hunt behind like the old farm. There's an old farm there and the animals love i don't know what the it's something about the deer that that was always fascinating but they love being around like barns farm animals or bed down near them um if you can find a swamp behind a cow pasture or a hoss paddock or something like that i guarantee nine times out of ten there's going to be a buck bed in in that area and that's what it's always been my case hunting in those Huh. Those little areas, I mean, been so productive with those areas. You know, say I used to hunt the behind around golf courses. <laughs> <clears throat> I've shot more Pope and Youngs around golf courses. Uh, just the mere fact is that they fertilize that the golf course. It's all high energy food. All the acorns are high energy. I used to hunt this one golf course. And right on the backside of nine hole, there was a area it was like just over an acre of um, picker bushes and just just the nastiest stuff that you can you can imagine. My buddy used to live right next to the golf course, and he said he'd see the deer all the time come through his backyard. He says, "I says really." So I said, "Mike, do you mind if I get on and put a stand up behind your house? You know, you know, off a ways." He said, "No, I don't care." I did, and I went down there and. Sure enough, all those deer were bedding in that one little acre and a half spot, and guys were golfing around it all day long. And those bucks were bedding in that area, and nobody <laughs> even knew. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so I moved. I got down there, and <clears throat> that place of hunting behind that, I saw, I saw a few, a, a few bucks. But then all of a sudden, up come the, up come the up the dirt road. Here comes a, a pickup truck. I'm going, who the heck is that? Well, it's Rick and. The the uh, Lucas, the kid that was with him, <laughs> he says, "You got to pack up. We got to go." Jake's up there where you were before. He said, "There's a huge, two huge bucks up there." He goes, "Really?" I goes, "Yeah." So I, I grabbed all my shit. I mean, we're grabbing stuff, throwing it in the truck, and we're hauling ass up there. And we come down the the dirt road, and we pulled off to the side. <clears throat> and uh, Jake was there. He said, "Well, there's a, there's a." I think there's a big nine chasing a doe down in here where I was. Then what happened to look over on the Indian ground over there, which we can't hunt, and there's a big old buck laying there a couple hundred yards in with a doe. And I'm glassing him going, well, that's the one we want to go after because he's big, you know. So Rick and I look at him and goes, yeah, he's a nice one. <clears throat> but it's on the Indian reservation. There's no hunting. So we said, well, we'll... So Rick and I decide we're going to go down in there. And Rick says, okay, I'll film. So he goes, all right. So him and I start in, and we're going down through following this little uh, this little uh, pine grove. 
and we want to go down into the coulee. <clears throat> so we're taking our time. So we walked up on a badger. And I, I'm standing there. I look down. The son of a bitch is right there. He's like, <laughs> like that. I'm going, holy shit. I goes, Rick, look. He goes, what's going on? I goes, the badger. He's pissed off. He says, well, get the hell out of here. You know, so we had scooting around the badger. He's hissing and farting and pissing. And I said, I'm laughing my ass off. So we ended up scooting around. So we start going down. <clears throat> and we're going to ease our way down in and see if we can pick up, see if the, that buck's chasing that doe around in there. And all of a sudden, uh, I just look over my shoulder, I look way on the other field, and Rick goes, just as I look, Rick goes, here comes that doe. And I look at it, and here's that buck right behind her. And he's going to jump, he's going to jump the barbed wire fence out of that pasture. He's going to pop across the dirt road, jump that fence, and he's going to head right into that little... It's a long, uh, like a hemlock fence, and sure enough, he just jumps across. And you, when you see the heavies, it's it's very distinctive, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of impressive when you see him. <clears throat> and he just followed her right over there, and he went right inside that. And just a row of trees, a single row, and he's in there chasing her around. And we couldn't see him. He's on the other side. We're waiting, waiting. Rick and I are sitting on the ground. And we don't know what's going on. We thought that he had taken off. He went north. So I waited and waited. All of a sudden, she popped out on our side, probably 200 yards away. Then all of a sudden, she runs right down in the coulee in front of us, right? And I look up, and boom, he popped right out. <laughs> and he's like, oh, he knows where he's going. And camera was going the whole time. <clears throat> Rick's got his camera going the whole time, right? And I'm sitting down on my ass. Right, and it's a it's a draw down, and Rick's behind me. Right, he's kind of like my guide, going, "Okay, he's coming." He goes, "Oh shit, he's right there," you know. And uh, that doe came right down, probably a hundred yards, right into that little draw, and he bolts right down, and he's messing around with it, chasing around. I I couldn't get a shot, and I was excited, you know. Then they pop out on our side, and she pops out, and I go, "Oh, this is happening now. It's game on." And she popped out. Ran 20 yards, jumped right back in. He flew out like that, and he started going back in, and I rifled off a shot, and I got him that shot. Then then I just started emptying my gun, you know, because, you know, I wanted to get the, the, the kill shot into him. Then I could see I'm hitting all sorts of stuff. So I shoot that, I shoot that, uh, the 300. Um, so what I typically do is I, I never load a, uh, three round, uh, four rounds at it. But that particular day, I, I, I put a round in the chamber and I put three in my clip. Uh, cause out there it's long distance shooting. So you always want to have four rounds, but I just forgot. So I emptied my gun <laughs> and he's still down there, you know, doing his thing. And I already got a round into him and he's not going here. And then Rick and I are going, what well, panic? And I goes, I got no more bullets. Right. He goes, Rick's going, F he goes, <laughs> So he runs all the way back to the truck. He, he's going to get his Creedmoor, right? He's like, I'll go get my gun. He flies back to the truck. I'm sitting there watching the deer, you know, and they're all running around down in there. And uh, Rick comes back with his gun, and, of course, he's got that, that muzzle brake on it, and that's, a, that's an air pierce of that thing, you know. So he gives me the gun. He goes, shoot it. And I'm shooting and just brushing everything that's going everywhere. And we're laughing our ass off, you know, and it was, we finally, it was it was hilarious, <clears throat> but finally ended up, you know, getting the deer, and you know we ran down there, and we're just so so much excitement. I don't think I've been that excited in a long time because you're with your buddy, you know, and everybody's there, and we're just high five and hugging because it's it was such a nice day. It's a beautiful deer, you know. Yeah. And he's big. He's a he was a big one, and. Uh, and that just made the whole trip, you know. Yeah, it is always fun when you have that <clears throat> extra bonus of having someone there to share it with you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I don't know that Hal's going to be doing that hunt anytime soon, though. Just no. <laughs> it doesn't sound like his cup of tea. I, I'd enjoy <clears throat> that. Yeah. yeah it's, well, quite frankly, I don't have as much time to go, you know, in the fall. I could carve out some time in December, I guess. But, mm. but uh, yeah. 
Why not? We're going again. Well, you hunt out there. You hunt out, you elk hunt and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, you know, I've hunted in Montana two or three times and some other places, but you, those were always to go tracking, except for the elk hunting, you know, the elk hunting. But it's a different hunt, you know. I'm just, yeah. yeah. I, I like hunting other things, but for me, it's, if I'm going to take the time to go hunt a deer, I, I really ain't going to sit in the stand. No, no. Just, it. I ain't changing that way at no, my age. No, not, not no, now. no. No. I'm it, hoping I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm supposed to be going to, I think we'll be going to Iowa this year. I'm hoping. Yeah. We got to get the draw for uh, a buddy of ours. I think Eric and I are going to go out. So I'd, I'd look forward to that just because where we're going is southeast Iowa. You know, yeah. you just never know what's yeah, going to pop out yeah. there. So that yeah, should be a good sure. time. Yeah, it's always different. I, mean, it's, <clears throat> I like I like different. I, that's that's yeah. the only thing really about the the you talking about the Sika hunt that's appealing. I mean the meat too, obviously, but but uh, just something different. It sounds like kind of how I grew up hunting the Everglades, you know, and real thick. Grass oh, it's probably and, very similar. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Because I've hunted down there for alligators, you know, with my bow, and it's very same terrain. Like you know, yeah, it's that tall frag grass and you're in the swamps and it's pretty cool stuff but they probably wouldn't let you take an air boat in there no uh, those yeah those things are crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I don't i mean you have you've hunted alligators down there before haven't you oh yeah they're crazy i mean you we got in an air boat and we start up on shore and the guy he bolts the thing we're going through the grass and down over and, of course, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. That's when you hunt those things with a bow and arrow. And sometimes you're, you know, the, the thing is like an airplane. Yeah. So, and it doesn't that's, bother, some of the alligators that bother, some of them, you bump into them with a boat. That's why I can't hear anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to build air boats, run them all the time. And, and uh, I never, it's not so bad when you're looking straight ahead, but if you turn your head sideways, it will pierce your ears. It, oh, loud. yeah. I was blown yeah, away. That's stupid. Yeah, I should have been wearing hearing protect, hearing protection the whole time. But yeah, young and young and invincible. Yep. Yeah. But how about a how about a uh, one of those banana hammock things? You would you get in one of those a sling? What are, what do they call it? Yeah, Neil got oh, the me. saddle hunting. Saddle. Oh. Hunting, yeah. They tried to get me into one of them down at that uh, hunt stock there. Yeah, how'd that work out? They make one tall enough for you? Oh, I said no thanks. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. We're gonna do it. Uh, I got one in this year. Yeah, Neil and and uh, Chris got me into one. Are they comfortable? They um, don't even look comfortable. To me. <laughs> I, I this is how I approached it. Um, so down down in Illinois, I had series of I had series of uh, stands out, and there was one particular buck. I call him the Big Nine. That we're watching. And I was kind of more leaning his way, you know, because I kind of you couldn't hunt you couldn't hunt one particular ten uh, just a single day because the wind would shift, so you'd always move it around. And I like I'm a big fan of ladder stands, portable ladder stands, and hang ons. Yeah. Uh, and down some of that country down there, you can't use a climber because you have to get into certain areas. So. He kept coming out. Every time I went to one stand, he would come out on another stand. Then I'd go to that stand, he'd come out to a different stand. So finally, <clears throat> there was um, and there was one particular tree where he came out three times in the one corner of the set-aside field. And it had limbs on it. You couldn't get a ladder stand in there. You couldn't get a climber in there. And the only thing that you could have got in there was that saddle. So um, I went down there that mid-afternoon because that's when I set my stands as midpoint. Um, and I went down there, trimmed a couple trees, and I got up in that. It, it was no bigger than this, you know. It was a maple. It was right on the edge of a ditch. And I said, if he came out, he's going to come out. The So it has that advantage that you can put it places where you can't get conventional stands. Um but the what I didn't like about it is that the tree is in your face constantly. What I found out is that because um, personally, if I if I see deer 
I'm always standing up because I shoot standing up and I want to get my, I want to get everything ready and I want little movement as possible. And I want them to be, uh, at their, at the point where there's, they're not on edge or anything coming through or whatever. So, so up, if I see them way out, I'm up and I'm waiting. Um, and I don't like anything in front of me, especially archery hunting. So when you're up there, you, you got to kind of do this and do that. So he finally, I, I got down there. Was, I had the right wind. I got down. I set the saddle up uh, the day before, the, the platform, everything. I got up in there, and I had the right wind, so I went down. And, and sure enough, I had like eight does come out. They came out on the other side. Then he finally came out, and it wasn't the big nine. It was a big eight. You know, but it was well worth a, you know, for archery hunting, it was well worth it. Mm. But what happened is he came in to my left, and I'm a right handed shooter. So, in that tree is right in front of you. So, he's coming this way. I had all the does walk under me, and they were like right down below me. And of course, you're at, at that point, you're just, you're not moving an inch. You're just kind of like waiting. And you're kind of moving all your you every everything else is moving your eyes are moving but everything else is still. So, <clears throat> I he did a couple ground scrapes on the other side. Then uh, he came to my left. He got within thirty yards. I couldn't get any shot. It was a perfect shot, and the does are still down below me, and they kind of moved off to the right to the north. Then way on the other side of the the set aside field another buck came out. It was a small, smaller buck. And he was chasing a doe around. And you could hear him down there grunting. I kind of looking out of the corner of my eye, and he's just chasing circles. And I said, yeah, this is my live decoy. As soon as that buck came out, he stopped focus on the does, and he was looking at that action down there. And that's when he started walking this way. So when he got to a point where um, that I figured I could move, you know, I could take my bow and move this way and get out like that and once you get to that point and i probably 35 yard shot 35 40 yard shot i figured i'd range the the ditch that he would come by and uh that's when i got the shot at him and he didn't make it out of the field on the other side of the field but and yeah, that tree being in front of you is a, a blessing and a curse it's a blessing and a curse. It's yeah. more of a curse than anything. What really saved me was the buck that came out on yeah. the far, the north end of the field chasing doe because it took the attention off of me, you know, because uh, yeah. they're so in, in tune. If they're around does, they're kind of stupid sometimes, but they're not, they're not that stupid, you know, especially if in the wide open. So any movement that you make, you have to be careful. Of course, if I had a gun, I, I would have shot him coming out of the out of the woods but archery hunting is a kind of different ball game <clears throat> but it to do the saddle for me um i'm a kind of a bigger guy wider frame you know um i don't think i could sit in it all day long you know um where typically um i'm in that thing from dark to dark i you know i kind of up and down move around try to get comfortable but I don't think I could sit in it all day long. Yeah. Um, but it's a definitely a tool, you know, yeah. an added tool. <clears throat> yep. Well, <clears throat> get any other bucks? Um, nothing in New Hampshire this year? Nothing in New Hampshire. I passed. I passed on a few of my, you know... Um, you know, want I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, sometimes I'm I'm. You're picky. If it's picky, or I got to have the right moment, or whatever. But sometimes uh, I just I'll take videos of them. And uh, sometimes um, it's practicing too. You know. Yeah. You know, because. I posted that one, <clears throat> like that. Uh, we saw that one with me in the tree, and the the buck came out. Yeah, from see that. My, yeah. So he was like two hundred yards away, and I kind of grunted him over. I gave him a couple soft locating grunts and stuff like that, and he 
and he picked up on it. He didn't look my way, but his, you know, his ear went like that and I knew he heard me. And, uh, and that was pretty cool because I could, I could hear him coming from behind me. Then I'm kind of looking out of the corner of my eye and there he was. And you could see him in the, the video. He's looking around. He's looking for me. He's looking for not particularly yeah, me, but what was there. Yeah. And I got some comments on it. Said, well, you know, you guys would have shot that. And every right to, you know, without a doubt. Um, but I look at it for me as, I mean, I already won the game. You know, I got him there. To me, that's exciting. Yeah, that's you know? it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same way <clears throat> with if you're tracking one and you catch up to it, and you see him and you say, I guess I'll let him go. You you won the game. Yeah, you do. You really yeah. won the game, and like we talked about earlier, it's that's what it's all about. It's about you know the excitement because once you once you shoot and it's all over, it's kind of like a, a it's kind of like a almost a little bit of a letdown to a certain degree. Yeah, you've won now. What do you do now? You know, the hard work starts. Which is still yep. exciting, but it's like it's. Um, it's kind of like <clears throat> it's your high, almost like anticlimactic or something. You know, you just get. It's almost like you. Oh, uh, I don't want to say disappointed. You're not disappointed, <clears throat> but it's like, well, for here especially, it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And I, I listen. That's our drug. Yeah, it truly is our drug. I mean, it's it's our it's our high. It's what we do. It's it's um, it's and to get that feeling all season, you know, because yeah, I'm sure your season starts the day it ends, you know. Yep. So. Yeah, the best season would be to track one every day and shoot one the last day. Yeah, yeah, That'd be the best. But yeah, yeah, so. But everybody's <clears throat> different in that way, and I've always said that I think as we get older, we get more that way, anyways. You know, when you're when yeah. you're when you're young, you you want to shoot everything, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. And you need yeah. to because you need to get including some Tweety Birds. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I've shot. Yeah. But that's how you get practiced up, you know. Yeah. So, but when you get older, I I know I've gone soft about shooting stuff. Yeah, I'm soft. Certain things I wouldn't shoot. Just wouldn't anymore, you know. I don't need to, you know. Yeah, and it, the the neat thing about with uh, with all the guys on the team and everybody, and we've talked about this before. We don't compete with each other. We don't compete. Oh no, with anybody. Um, it's all internal. It's all about us. You know, yeah. it's about yourself. It's about. You know, Enjoying in the moment. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and yeah. I love to see other guys shoot nice deer, you oh, know, yeah. and I like uh, whether they're button bucks, big mature bucks, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, it's it's your tag. You shoot whatever you want, and, you know, it's it's, it's still exciting, you know, and to see that, like. <laughs> or don't shoot whatever you want. Yeah, right? or don't. It goes yeah. both ways, yeah. My, my, my grandson this year and my wife, they shot two monster a 25-pound bird and a 24-pound bird, two turkeys. Wow. You know, my grandson shot. He was a tanker. And to me, that was just so exciting, you know, to see him do that. Those are giant birds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah. It's all that good feed. That's coming quick. Winter. Yeah, yeah, That'll that's be here coming, before we yeah. know it. Yeah, we're going to head out to Nebraska to hunt those Merriams. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah in, uh, April, in April. I'm going to go. Who's going there? Just myself. Yeah. Well, you want to go? Maybe. <laughs> I can't wait. I mean, I've. I mean, when I was out there, there was there was a lot of birds, you know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, it should be fun. I mean, I I love turkey hunting. So. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we've had a good time chatting. Huh? You finally yeah. got up yeah. here and. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. When was well, the last time you were up this way? Well, he won't come up deer him? hunting, so I don't. Oh, last summer, right? Yeah, no, yeah. No, I was missed never, last summer. No, yeah, yeah. I well, was spring thaw. Yeah, it was. Oh, right. my buddy Sean. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. to go to his thing. Yes, yeah. spring thaw. <clears throat> it's Which always, 
that's uh, so this will be out. Yeah, this will be out before spring thaw. But all the all the tickets are <clears throat> yeah sold, right? I don't yep. think. Yep, tickets are all sold for spring thaw. Well, I think there's I think there's a few left. I talked to Neil last night. I think oh, there, okay. there still might be a few left. Oh, I was thinking. <clears throat> I was thinking they said they were sold. I knew they were gonna. Yeah. Save a f save a few for. Like yeah. special guests or something, but. That uh, should be a lot of fun. I can't wait yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to it as well. I got a couple of housekeeping items here. I forgot this one last time. Um. Uh, Deer openings for this fall. I'm pretty sure. Well, I know all the guided hunts are booked. I might have an opening for one or two the first week, and I've got still plenty of room for Thanksgiving week. So if anybody's interested in that, you can you know how to get a hold of me if you're interested coming up here and chasing some bucks. There ought to be a Plenty of them again because I don't think we lost any this winter. The way the our winter. winter's over at this point. Yeah. I mean. So that yeah, the weather update here is it's. I have never since I've lived here thirty five years ever seen a winter like this where we never had more than knee deep snow here, which is nothing. Yeah. And and then it two weeks ago, which would have been like mid-February we had a warm day and it settled it all settled it down pretty good and then we had two more warm days just this past week and then we're here it is I think this is the 20 is this the 29th February yeah yep. so this is the last day of February and the outlook the weather forecast starting tomorrow is in the 40s for 10 days Jeez. and only drop in like it's going to be good maple sugar sugar and weather but it's only going to get down to like 28 29 30 at night so it's not going to ever freeze down through i almost think we'll have mostly bare ground in 10 days well there ain't nothing coming up our way for until i nope. started getting up they don't even they've got a little mm. some rain showers or something but not like not even a storm mm. you know it's it's crazy mm. i've never seen it the, the earliest i've seen it before this is the third week of march it went to mostly bare ground like it was half bare and half snow but i mean you didn't could walk anywhere it's crazy oh. mm. yeah going back to that thanksgiving week opening i know the challenge is always you know, people staying home for Thanksgiving, and that's understandable. I'd have a hard time being away too, but that's it's such a great week to hunt usually. Well, and then this year, we because this is leap year, the deer season flipped ahead again. It was backing up earlier. Now, it's basically the month of November. It starts the fourth, and then it runs until the thirty first. I think Thir right through the month. So, yep. Thanksgiving is late. It's the last week of the month and it's going to be to me this that's when it's still peak of the rut you know so the last two weeks will be good rut weeks and even going into the second week it'll be heating up but yeah for sure i mean thanksgiving week it was always my favorite week i always would tell people everybody want to come to third week thanksgiving week was my favorite week it and Except the next favorite week would be like the first week if we had snow. You know, first <clears throat> right. week without snow isn't. But if you got snow the first week, they ain't moving much, and it makes it uh, your trips a lot shorter. But mm. yeah, so we got them. We got some openings for that, and uh, and um, maybe one. I got to look again. I think I think I got one room, a two, with two queens in it for the first week, and that's it. And um, um, also, I wanted to remind people that the moose lottery, you can probably see it if you're going to put in for a moose tag. They made it later this year. Yeah. It's April. April 1st, I April think. April 1st. Opens. Yeah, usually in, in January we start putting in for the. Do you know what the reason behind that was or what prompted it? It's, it's 
they want to be able to have an accurate number of permits per zone before people select their zones. That's and they have, that was the reason I was given. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So so now this year you only really got like six weeks to put in because right. they got to be in by mid May, and uh, so you got six weeks to put in. But that's plenty of time. So if you're interested in getting in on the moose hunt here, get in there and get in the lottery. And if you get drawn, we'll be able to take care of you. Between me and Joe and Lee and Ben, we'll uh, we'll get you taken care of. And uh, if anybody's interested, if they're not interested in the in the uh, getting in on the lottery, I've got to uh, be guiding on a moose uh, outfitter tag again. And uh, if you're interested in that, also you can get a hold of me and and uh, we can talk about that. We got anything else? I think that's it. All right. Good times. Good times. Thanks for coming up, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Good Thank times. You. Good stories. And want to uh, go ice fishing tomorrow? Yeah, you want to go? We're going. All right. We're going to Moosehead Lake with Rick. Yeah, I went last weekend. Oh, we're going to have a party. <laughs> I better go again then. You better yeah, come. Yeah, you plan on going. <laughs> yeah. Have a good time. Not too often that we drink, so it's like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll probably be the one having to keep you in line because I won't be doing I'll give drinking. you a ride home. I mean. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Again. Support our sponsors and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, good luck on the trail. Hi, everyone. Team member Mark Sheeran here. I've been helping people solve their addictions for the last 34 years. In 2017, we published the revolutionary non-12 step book, The Freedom Model for Addictions. If you'd like a free paperback copy sent directly to you, go to freebook.freedommodel.org. That's freebook.freedommodel.org. All right, take care. Hey guys, Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a uh, four-season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open all obviously through the summer right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And, uh, of course, we've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season. So check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time, good luck on the trail.